let's imagine for a moment that we need to loosen this nut, which is on the wheel of a car. And we have two wrenches that will be able to help us out with this. So the first wrench has a shorter handle and the other one has a longer handle. Which one of these wrenches here would make it easier to unscrew this nut? Now intuitively, we know that the longer wrench would be the better choice for this problem. But why is it better? And is there a way to quantify how much better this wrench is compared to the smaller one? In fact, there is a way to quantify this, and this quantity is called torque. And torque is normally represented by the Greek letter tau and has SI units of newton meter. Now torque is a measure of a force's ability to rotate an object. And we're gonna break this down with this wrench example here. So in order to loosen this bolt and cause it to rotate, we need to generate a large enough torque. So if we apply a force in the upward direction at the end of the wrench handle for each wrench, and we apply the same magnitude of force, say 25 newtons. The only difference here we have between these two scenarios is the distance the force is applied from the axis of rotation. And the axis of rotation is the center of rotation here in the bolt. Now in this situation, this force on both the wrenches here is perpendicular or 90 degrees to the wrench's handle. So in this case, we can refer to this distance here, D1 and D2, as the lever arm. But it's really important to stress here that the lever arm has nothing to do with the wrench's handle itself. So the precise definition of the lever arm is this. So the lever arm is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the line drawn along the direction of the force. Now this is hard to visualize, so I'm going to draw this out. So again, we have a wrench trying to unscrew this nut here, but this time, the force is no longer at 90 degrees to the wrench's handle. It's at some angle. If we draw a line back along the direction of the force and then draw a perpendicular line to the axis of rotation here, so these two lines are at a 90 degree angle, this perpendicular distance here is the lever arm. And this is the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation, the center of the nut here, to a line drawn along the direction of the force. And this is the line drawn along the direction of the force. And the length of this side, if we take this angle here, is equal to this length here, d sine the angle here. So with these examples, so this example here and this example up here, how do we calculate the torque on this bolt as we apply a force on the wrench here? Well, the torque is equal to the magnitude of this force multiplied by the lever arm here, which is d sine theta. And this is the cross product. And the cross product or the vector product produces a vector itself that is perpendicular to both the force vector here and the lever arm vector here. And we'll discuss this further in a minute. So if we go back to our two wrench examples above, we can see now that the larger wrench will generate more torque because torque is equal to the force multiplied by the lever arm. 
And when the force is at 90 degrees here to the lever arm, we simply multiply the distance of the lever arm by the force. And when we have a larger lever arm distance with the same force, then the torque is going to be greater. So we use some values for this example. We can work out the torque generated on both these bolts here. So we're going to keep the force at 25 newtons for both these examples. D1, this distance, this lever arm distance, is going to be 0 0.10 meters or 10 centimeters. D2, this distance here, is going to be 0 0.30 meters or 30 centimeters long. And we're going to keep the force at 25 newtons. So to work out the torque on both these examples, tau 1, for this example here, we've got 25 newtons for the force multiplied by the lever arm distance. And remember the force and the lever arm must be at 90 degrees to one another. So again, going back to this example, if the force applied to the object that we're trying to rotate is at an angle, then the lever arm is not going to be along the wrench's arm because it has to be at 90 degrees. So the torque for the first example, tau 1, is equal to 2.5 newtons meter. For the longer wrench, tau 2 is equal to 25 newtons, again, because the force is the same, multiplied by 0 0.30 meters. And we get a value of 7.5 newtons meters which is three times the value of the first torque. So when the lever arm is three times the length with the same force, the torque is three times as great, which means this force has three times the ability to rotate this bolt here, making it easier for us to unscrew this bolt. So if we took the larger wrench from the above example, which was 0.3 meters, and we now apply the 25 Newton force at a 45 degree angle. What would the torque be on this bolt in this example? Now the lever arm has to be at a 90 degree angle to the direction of the force. And the lever arm always goes through the axis of rotation and meets up with the line of the force vector here. So we can see that this lever arm distance is shorter than the length of the wrench here. And because it's shorter, our torque should be less than the previous example above, which makes sense because when we apply a force at an angle like this, intuitively, we know it's going to be harder to turn the wrench. So all we need to do to calculate the torque is multiply the force of 25 newtons by the length of this side here, which is 0.30 d sine 45 degrees. And when we sum this up together, we get a value of a positive 5.3 newton meters. But some of you may have realized, due to this cross product here, that we could instead use the perpendicular component of this force here. So what do I mean by that? So the perpendicular component of this force of 25 newtons is simply this line here. which in this case, because this angle here is 45 degrees, is going to be equal to the magnitude of this force here, F, sine 
45 degrees. And we can use the value of the wrench's length here instead of the lever arm length because the only thing that we need when we're calculating the torque is that the force component and the lever arm have to be at a 90 degree angle to one another. So we can see here, we've got a positive 5.3 newton meters, which is less than the 7.5 newton meters up here, which makes sense. And that should be positive. Now, I mentioned earlier that torque is a vector quantity, and therefore torque has a direction as well as a magnitude. So we've got a magnitude here, value for the torque, but it also has a direction. So in this case, in a 2D example, when we're rotating an object anti-clockwise, then the sign of the torque is positive. If we were to tighten this nut, we would need to rotate the wrench in a clockwise direction. And therefore, the torque would have a negative sign. Now, this is all down to convention rather than any fundamental principle. And it's simply something that you need to remember. But if we were to think about torque in three dimensions, we can determine the direction of the torque using the right hand grip rule. And it works like this. If you hold out your right hand and curl your fingers, if your fingers point in the direction of the force, your thumb points in the direction of the torque. So if you're rotating an object anti-clockwise on a flat plane, the torque is going to point upwards. If you turn your hand around so that your fingers are pointing in the clockwise direction, your thumb is pointing downwards, and that's the direction of the torque. And we can actually see this more clearly from this animation. And the force here is the dark blue arrow that points at 90 degrees from the gray rod here. And therefore the red arrow represents the lever arm. So as the system rotates, the torque, the light blue arrow, points upwards. Now when it rotates clockwise, the torque is pointing down. Now this animation also shows us the magnitude and direction of the angular momentum, which is in light green, and changes as the linear momentum changes in this system. And this is something that we'll cover in a future lesson. So we have a bar here that rotates around this axis of rotation. And we've got two forces acting on this bar simultaneously. We've got force one at 25 newtons acting at a 25 degree angle from the vertical. And we've got force two here at 15 newtons acting straight down. And that's acting at three meters away from the axis of rotation and force one is acting at 1.5 meters away from the axis of rotation. Now like before, we can work out the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation by drawing a line along the direction of the force here, so drawing that back and then having a perpendicular line here and this like perpendicular line would be the lever arm or we can work out this perpendicular force component here because all we need is a 90 degree angle between the distance and the equivalent force acting on the rod at that distance. And it has to be at 90 degrees. So that's what I'm going to do with this example with force one. With force two, we've already got a 90 degree angle between the distance and the force component acting around the axis of rotation. Also notice here that we've got two forces that are trying to rotate this bar here in opposite directions. So remember, an anti-clockwise direction would produce a positive torque value according to our convention, and a clockwise direction, which would be caused by this force here, would cause a negative torque. And all we need to do 
is work out the net torque produced by these two forces. So the net torque is equal to the sum of both these torques here. So let's call the torque caused by this force torque 1 and the torque caused by this force torque 2. And all we need to do is work out the torque for both these forces and add them together to get the total net torque. So let's start with the first force. So I'm going to work out the perpendicular component of this force here of 25 newtons. In other words, what's the equivalent force pushing directly upwards by this force acting at, at an angle? So because this is a right angle triangle and we've got our angle on this side, on the adjacent side, our perpendicular force is equal to the hypotenuse, 25.0 newtons, multiplied by cosine 25 degrees, 25.0 degrees. And this will give us this force vector here. But to get the torque from this force, we need to multiply this perpendicular force vector by the distance that the force is acting from the axis of rotation. So tau 1 is equal to F perpendicular multiplied by D1, which is equal to 25.0 newtons multiplied by cosine 25 degrees multiplied by 1.50 meters. And we get a torque, a positive torque, remember, because this is working to move the rod in the anticlockwise direction. We get a value of positive 34.0 newtons meters. What about for this force here? Well, it's already at a 90 degree angle from this distance here, the lever arm distance. So all we need to do is multiply both these numbers together. And remember, according to our convention, we're moving clockwise here. This force is acting to move the bar in a clockwise direction. So negative F2 multiplied by D2, which is equal to negative 15.0 newtons multiplied by 3.00 meters. We get a value of negative 45.0 newtons meter. So what does this mean in terms of the total torque on this rod here? Well, we simply just add these two torques together to get the net torque. So the net torque is equal to tau 1 plus 34.0 newtons meters plus tau 2, which is negative 45.0 newton meters. We get a value, a net torque value of negative 11.0 newton meters. So what does this mean in terms of the bar here? Which direction is it rotating? Well, because we've got a negative net torque here, this means that the bar must be moving in the clockwise direction because according to our convention, a negative torque means that an object is rotating in the clockwise direction. 